Hey everybody, it's Cinnamon Cooney, your art sherpa, and today we're going to be going on step two of Oya. So this is a portrait of a really, really gorgeous image, and we're going to be working on a bit of our background and laying in some of our first and basic skin tones for the portrait today. Um, if you want to see part one where we did the grid in and we also did an exercise on how to find skin tones using a reference photo, that's in the Oya playlist. Um, and there's some other information on uh, the background history and everything of Oya. On the mic is my husband, John. Hello. He helps me bring you guys these really cool live classes uh, by zooming in and doing all the stuff, which is why our show actually was a little bummed today because he got stuck in the DMV. So the show doesn't happen without him, but nobody can escape the DMV. This is true. These are, these are interesting uh, counterbalancing deals. So um, I think I'm going to start out with the sky and then I'll just jump right into some basic skin tones and some stuff here because I want to get into the fur maybe even sooner than later, but I need to have a certain amount painted in to be able to do that. And in painting, we're always thinking about uh, the way objects are layered in, in relationship to each other, what objects are painted over other objects. And some of it's about uh, trying to find an economy of your um, effort and time. You don't want to paint out something that you just put a lot of effort into. So I'm going to start out with, this is an oval mop. Um, there's a bunch of different ones of these. Royal Lane Nickel makes some inexpensive ones. Uh, uh, I know Princeton has one. This is my favorite, the Ultimate Varnish, mm -hmm. um, which hopefully we're going to have in our store eventually on our website. I would like to. That way I know you guys can get it. I'm going to get out by getting it damp. And uh, this, it, let's go over the colors real quick. We have Zinc White, Ultramarine Blue, Mars Black, Raw Umber. You could use Burnt Umber, Burnt Sienna. Um, it might, it might be tough to use a, a raw sienna cause that's almost a yellow, a quinacridone magenta, yellow ochre and titanium white. And I want to kind of come in and put in a stormy sky. So I'm going to just take my damp brush and brush out the grid, mm. make sure that I don't have one of those, uh, grid situations where the grid feels super permanent. Sometimes that'll happen to you if you're gritting a canvas and the paint is still a little bit warm or you press a little bit too hard. You can end up with a grid that does not disappear well. Now, John has the chat, and if you have a question, mm -hmm. put your question all in caps, and uh, here the moderators will try to catch it. Yeah. Um, that is what they are there for. So if you're looking for a resource, um, you can also ask a moderator. If you see a butterfly with a wrench, and you're looking to learn to do a particular art skill, or if you want to see if I have another video series on something, um, all of our moderators are viewers like you that have just been here so long that they have some idea of what a thousand one hundred paintings or whatever it is we've done now Good are, <laughs> mm -hmm. so they can help you through. Let's start by putting in kind of a, a very loose stormy sky, and I'm going to begin with some of my ultramarine, and I might even get a little of my umber into it, kind of making a a gray, I want a very stormy sky. I see how that goes there, how it's loaded into the brush. And we're going to just brush downward. Sometimes the directionality of your brush strokes implies what's happening somewhere. So you can do a lot with a little. I'll come near her ear. I'll go in a little bit to those objects like her face. And I'm gonna just start out with this kind of gray tone, sweeping curved brush strokes. Can you see how those are curved? And that creates a little bit of a downward space. And I'm going to get into my zinc white. Oh, is something up with my sound? No, I'm going to adjust up this camera. Because you're painting so dark. I'm going to come here and add a little bit of a zinc white to that. This is a very deep and stormy sky. And so you can you have a little bit of light. This is, these little bits are just sort of show a distant sense of light or space. We don't want to get too detailed in her background, but we do want to have something going on. So to speak, you can see I'm blending this out. And I'm giving that the beginning of a little storm space. 
Now I may come here and pull in some more blue. And I'll go ahead and do little curved strokes. I hope I've got a big pot here. Hopefully uh, the camera can get around the pot. I'll move that to the side. I can see things. Oh, so you can kind of see the directionality of that stroke. We're kind of curve it and try to make interesting little forms based on those little curves, the zinc white. And that'll give the clouds perhaps some shape beyond the directionality of the storm. Mm -hmm. Now we, we believe based on research that Oya is the basis for storm oh, wait, from the X-Men. There you are. Sorry about that guys. What? You were hiding. I was hiding. I had, I didn't, I didn't get you to pop back up there. You were just talking with a Just pal. talking. I was like a regular YouTube paint along with me show. Yeah. Where well, there was no Sherpa. <laughs> <laughs> Notice I'm picking there up some go. highlights and we're just trying to make impressions. You don't want to get too detailed one because the sky is super in the distance, right? And you want to just give the impression that if, that something is happening in this space, little bits of little curl, just give the impression. And that will also, you know, help her kind of stand out and, and be, you know, maybe the, the central focus. Ultramarine is a better blue to use um, when you're doing a stormy or winter sky, say over Thalo. Um, and, 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 and between Thalo and Prussian, I would tend to go Prussian. And that's because there's so much turquoise, there's so much green in most Thalo blue that you get, unless you get the red shade, that it'll start to pull it into a summer aspect. It'll feel like summer, the warmth of that, like coming at you. Whereas the way that the red in the ultramarine works is it will start to already feel like that familiar winter, winter sky. Mm. Add a little more blue here. Again, just trying to make it feel like there's different little aspects of cloud cover. Because you don't want to just have nothing going on where the, fur, where the fur is going to be or flying. So there we go. Just a little bit of a background. Not not crazy, not overwhelming, just just something suggested in that space. Mm. I'm gonna come back perhaps. I'm gonna take a little bit. I've got a domed blender here. The texture is very nice. Isn't that nice? I've yeah. got a Princeton dome blender. I'm gonna load up with some zinc. Maybe come along some of these edges. Oh, there we go. A little rough. And just imply something is happening here. And I see that that's going on. You can always blend up into the sky. Zinc is nice over titanium white because it's very transparent and it isn't so tinting. Uh, it's really nice to do in landscapes and also in uh, portraits because of that fact. It doesn't change the hue of the paint. Um, it just lightens it a bit. So it's a useful white to have around. If you can't find it, fun fact, you can kind of locate it in, you could use tinting white is another word for it. Mixing white is another word for it. And I have verified that a version of this is available from craft paint to pro paint. Mm. So it is everywhere in every price point. I try to use things, not, not always, like on some of the three hoop paintings, we get into some serious art materials, but I try to use things that you can get a hold of um, no matter what your art store is. I was just in Joanne's and confirmed that, you know, you could definitely paint with me if, if your only art store was Joanne. Hmm. I do that every once in a while. Now on Walmart's, that's hard to say because each craft department is sometimes run very differently. Yeah. You know, someone doesn't always know. A little bit of little, maybe these are just little wisps of events of things. And come in and just detail out little bits with 
this little down blender. Mm. And now you have a bit of an interesting sky. Definitely distant. What? Oh, that's the heating system. Is that what that is? Mm -hmm. Okay. So the ah, uh, yeah. This okay. is not haunted. It's just the heating system. Oh no! What it is is the it's the, so I know I've, I know why it's doing that now. I just didn't recognize the sound because I had my headset on. So I was like, <laughs> "What is that?" <laughs> now I've t I've rinsed my brush out, wiped it off, so it's just slightly damp. And you can see what I'm doing is I'm coming back through before all the paints dry and blending, hmm. which again softens that a bit. And makes it also feel a little bit more like a distant sky. Mm -hmm. so these are little tricks that you can do. Oh my goodness. Let's get into blocking in some skin tone. Okay. And I'm going to pull out. This is a brand new number six Cambridge. If you want to know uh, the difference between them is they age out the same brush. I'll oh, talk really? to you guys about the fact that brushes sort of wear down. And this is a good example that you can see where these bristles have started to shorten from the original. That's very normal in a hog brush. Very, very normal. So let's begin with a skin tone. I'm going to take a little of my burnt sienna and my raw umber. Just kind of working those as a base. And in a sense, I'm using the burnt sienna as my red and the raw umber as my yellow. I can always get a little of my yellow ochre in there. And when I have that kind of worked out, I'm going to come along the neck here. And I want to go into where I know that the necklace is going to be. I had to lighten this up a bunch so we could see the, but it's, I'm going to, I'm going to darken it back down so it matches the other one here just again. Okay. That's okay. So I'm going to start this and you can see that's already brightening that area of skin on her neck. I'm going to get into my zinc, not my titanium white. I will save my titanium white. Let's add a little bit of a highlight here on the shoulder for areas where I want to have a very strong highlight and do most of my skin lightening with zinc because it'll keep it from getting, um, sometimes titanium white can almost deaden skin tones, whereas zinc uh, will keep those colors very vibrant for you. A little bit of a blend there. Shoulders are fun, yeah? Mm. And remember, we've got our domed uh, scumbler if ever we need to like blend between two areas. But at this stage, we can probably just work the brush very lightly. And we'll go for a little bit today. This is a multi part video. Mm -hmm. So we'll be here for a second. Um, for sure. I may add just a little bit of, gosh, just a bit of black to this. Mars black, just a bit. Um, be careful with this. It's one, a very powerful color. And think of it as a blue. So mm. I know you wouldn't traditionally think of black as a blue, but in, in the aspect of this, think of this as a blue, think of this as a yellow, and think of this as a red, interestingly enough. Interesting. I'm gonna come here. I'm Hold gonna on, come me, way, oh, down. Oh, way down. Sorry, okay. I got. I I went to the bosom on him. There we go. I'm gonna come down to the bosom. I'm gonna get my base mix, which is my raw umber, my burnt sienna, a little Mars black. Um, to the bosom. And this is an interesting one to do because I've got to get such a subtle highlight to create the rise on her skin. Right. And I'm going to paint back into the necklace. But I do want that there. Oh, don't do that. Sorry, push the wrong button there. So I'm getting that a little bit darker. And we want this to have a little more. In the black, and then I'm going to rinse out and kind of see that we're getting that basic sort of shading there. And I'll go ahead and take my who mixes my burnt sienna and my 
Let's add a bit of a highlight happening here. And these two, I'm going to go across very gently for dusting. And then we'll get into our zinc, which will have most of the highlight, I think, focused up here towards the top. And remember, we're going to have a necklace coming down, so make sure you've got the skin going underneath her necklace. I'm just rounding it out, making sure we've got a nice shape. Yeah. Oh, that's a nice shape. It is very nice. Subtle, not overwhelming, right? We're not trying to... Just very lightly dusting this out. My pressure here is super light, guys. And the paint underneath here is uh, wet. Mm -hmm. And that's going to let the colors mix even a bit on the surface. There uh -huh. we go. So see, we've kind of shaded that there. A little shading going here. And come in and... Those all going together, and I do love come along the jawline. And we're going to start just painting that. It's just sort of the basic beginning of it. Okay. And then where there's highlights and shadows, we're going to put rough estimations of those. I'm going to come up there and try to get some side views. Right now, go. it's super important that we get a basis. It's it's. Hold on, just a second. I'm trying. I have to keep trying to adjust this because the it's the uh do, 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 how to adjust the. I need to actually go over and adjust this over something like that. So you're okay. You can keep going. Okay. I'm just recognizing that it's super hard for me to get these two angles to look the same because there's a a red shift. Oh, there's a good question from Victoria so, C. While John's adjusting this redshift, I'm going to answer some questions. Victoria C. asks, how do you prevent your mop brush from shedding? Mine sheds so much it gets stuck in the paint. Your mop brush should not shed. That is a failure of the brush company. You should take a picture of what you've got, and you need to contact the brush company, and they should replace it. Because they're not supposed to shed. You will see some shedding um, in hog bristle brushes and that's because how a good hog brush is made you might lose up to 20 hairs and how you prevent that from bothering your painting is you pre-wash your brushes and you scrub all the hair out and you give them a wash before you use them the first time all the hog bristles that are loose fall out and then you might only occasionally in a painting see one um, if it's shedding out more than that something is wrong with the way that the um uh, Filaments or hairs or bristles are collected and the way they're glued in and the way that the ferrules crimp them down. So there's just some failure in the brush. Unless you did something crazy like leave your mop in water for some long, long amount of time and it ate out the glue. Um, when painting skin, says Sabrina, uh, do we always start with the darkest color? So for me, I kind of like to start with the mid-range, like the, the base range, and then uh, very subtly tweak up and down. Uh, but basically, you want to have at least five values of color that you can get to, like in, in dark, from dark to light, excluding even the areas where uh, the skin tone may change. It may be more reddish, or it may have more yellow, or it may have something like that. So it's just super important to uh, make sure you have enough skin ranges. And if you have trouble with your mixes, like I don't have any problems with my micro mixes, but if that's hard for you, it's better to get a good middle skin range mix mm -hmm. and then add to it if you're really struggling with skin tones and cooking recipes are helpful to you um the uh walter foster uh 400 skin tone recipe book is the best and then laura would like to see the uh reference picture okay let's see here i can put and that you can also you. get the reference picture free from our website mixing my burnt sienna not sure where the best place to 
put that for you guys, those is. Maybe right there. Not a problem. And well, another place you could put her is right here because I'm not going to paint any of the fur today. Yeah, I've, so I've you got can put the her fur in the fur your, too. I put the fur behind you. Huh. So that way she can be peeking over your shoulders and you can see. Actually, I'll zoom in with her a little bit so we can have her peek right over Cinnamon's shoulder so you can see. This first layer is just about building a base tone for her skin. You know, not that different than anything we would be doing, you know, in relationship to uh, anybody's skin tone. Um, it can feel, I'm going to get a little, uh, maybe yellow into this and some pink white. I'm hearing kind of hit the ear a bit. Just to start to talk about that, a little of this. And then that we'll paint in the details of her ear a bit later. Just think, mm, there's an ear here, guys. Because mm. she's human and has the ears. She can hear the things. <laughs> <laughs> That's how that works. I'm going to go ahead and add a little of my red and... Starting to think about where your objects are and how they are. If I want to get a little of my black into that, I can. Getting a little black in my. I'll come there and kind of imply a bit of a, a bit of a shading. Mm -hmm. We're just starting to think about that. Because again, you just start out, you begin, you begin a subtle range of shading and then you put that down there. Add a little bit of dark value right here at the corner of the eye. We'll blend that out. Rinse out every once in a while, it's always a good idea. Because again, this is that start, start, start. Here, coming from the corner of the eye, we have a lighter value across the base of the cheekbone. Mm -hmm. Planes of the face. That's one thing. We all have planes of the face. So something I really want to say as you're painting skin tones to, to avoid, don't do a lot of light pink on the cheek. Don't do a light pink lip. Not going to read right, um, and it isn't accurate, and, and you want to be more observational than that. I see that happen with artists. They make that little mistake all the time, and it's just one that you want to avoid. A little bit under here. A little bit on the chin here. We're just lightening up, right? She's got a little highlight on her chin, so we're just taking a little highlight to the chin. We're just finding little spots where there is a highlight, and we're just working those out now. I think it's up her nose. And you can see that the zinc does a lovely job of lightening these browns without making them too chalky. And that's what you want, is uh, nice browns without them being too chalky. Hmm. Makes sense. Yeah. Now, if you're doing European or very fair skin tones, you can get away with a lot more in your titanium white. Right. Let's highlight up the nostril. Imply maybe some up here. Definitely keep that there. Page one. Now there's also from here coming out from the corner of that and out 
across her little lip is a bit of a highlight as well. Mm -hmm. Another thing, especially when painting women, and if they have very deep or dark shadows, right? You want to avoid creating the effect of five o'clock shadow when you're shading. Mm. I'm gonna get a little bit more of a little white highlight here at the base of the nose. And again, this is the zinc. I barely even touched the titanium white. And I'm just in my raw umber. I'm just almost creating a value study. There's a really spectacular, wonderful, special highlight above her eye. Uh, ever did her makeup look really good at makeup? I yeah. remember thinking this like her makeup is really that went really well. turned out pretty good. It did, and it's true. Like there is a bit of a if you look, there's almost a a magenta in there at the corner, and that's because because that was a place that they put some. I'm going to add some of that right there. It's a subtle effect, but. Little touches can be nice. Mm -hmm. And while we're here, I can come in and make a little magenta. Little brown and umber. Kind of worked in on the lip and then come back with. I got that mixed right into the magenta. Mm -hmm. Lighten with the zinc. That's how subtle. You want it subtle. Yeah. Right? You want it really subtle. And go back into um, a little black, a little burnt sienna. Top lip. For the most part, yes, there will be highlights. There will be little, little wonderful, subtle events. But for the most part, her top lip will be a value or two darker than her bottom lip. That's true on most people in this overhead lighting. Mm -hmm. So if you think about it, your top lip kind of comes out and casts a shadow and your bottom little brown inflated little lip has a highlight that catches here, which causes a shadow to hit here, which causes a highlight to hit here, which causes a shadow to hit here. Yep. And your job as an artist is to try to, I've added a little zinc to this, is to try to capture some of that Subtlety as you paint. And not take things into a caricature. Mm -hmm. um, there we go. That's looking pretty good. She's just filling out, looking fabulous. We're getting some nice, some nice basic little values going here. I'm going to get a little of my black over here. Go ahead and add oh. some red. My little thing was stuck there. Uh, if you do light skin and don't have zinc, is titanium white okay? Yeah. You can get away uh, um, on very fair skin with just titanium white. I think zinc is fantastic. Um, but I think, uh, and, and you'll see it when you get that color mixing book and, you, and, and if you watch people that um, paint a lot of people of color, you will notice that there are just some subtle differences in, in uh, how you warm the skin tone and how you lighten the skin tone. 
And when you play with color, you'll very quickly go, oh, it's because it, it overwhelms, the white overwhelms the color and takes it into a range that doesn't feel like skin. Mm -hmm. um, it's not that you never use it, it's just not your first go-to. But on very fair skin tones, you can get away with like a ton. Ton, ton, ton. I'm going to bring down a little bit of a dark value there, and then we've got another a dark value coming down. She's She's been really great in that... Um, Now I'm going to wipe my t my brush out on my towel, and I'll just go ahead and use the bristles to sort of fade a bit, blend a bit. This is where we've got to be super careful of the five o'clock shadow. Mm. And really watch for that. We don't want that. You know, and you may be coming back with some highlights and some blending here just to make sure that these planes of face register the way that you want. If I come back with a little bit of, oh, say my burnt sienna and my raw umber and some titanium wine, I can come back and let's just say we're going to highlight some there. Definitely want to highlight again here. By the way, there's reflected light from the necklace onto the chin. Sometimes you don't, if you're not, in the practice of observing the subject, you might mm. miss that reflected light, but it's there. And it's part of what makes this particular reference image uh, really compelling is the beautiful lighting on the model. That's also, she's gorgeous. She's not inspired by that. I'm going to and make sure I've got this blended. I don't want it to be too sharp. Well, it's about finding that face where it's there, but like the bust or the neck, it's subtly there. And get a little of my pink into this. But again, I don't want it to be a light pink. Right. It'd be subtle and rich and beautiful. Well, she's coming together nicely. That is nice. Yeah. These first moments are, are really great. And I, and I don't know. I love these first parts of it. Let's get a little bit of a dark value under the eye here. Even a little darker right there. If my brush is too wet, I've always got to come back and kind of blend out. And one thing I can do is if I'm worried, I can take the dome and soften too to make sure that that's very soft line. Soften this thing here. Worth doing. Super duper worth doing. Lots of zinc. Right here under the eye. And behind that shadow, there's a nice little highlight coming out. It helps if the two zones of color are a little uh, wet still so they can blend into each other. I 
And I got into a little bit of titanium white, and you can already see that that was like even a thing to manage. Mm -hmm. There we go. Now I need a smaller tool for under the nose and I'm actually going to get around. So this is, this is probably for, you know, in some sense, one of the more challenging spaces because we have a lot of shading under the nose and then also very subtle backlighting. Come here and come under. Mm -hmm. I'm a little shadow there. Let me get a little bit of my raw umber. So that that pulls down. It's still shaded, but there's a nice thing. And then we're going to get a little of our, our zinc, right? Mm-hmm. A little highlight there where there's a bit of a light back. There's a little bit of reflected light back up under that part of the nose. That's a little much, but it's a start. Maybe a little yellow ochre burnt sienna underneath here. It's like a, a subtle little bit of the interior of the nostril. Mm. That's kind of nice. Yeah. that back not that that's strong there I'm gonna get a little bit of a clean brush and then pull up some of my chalk because those might not be areas that I want highlights at this moment. Yeah. I'm going to be able to see the highlights that I do have mm -hmm. right there. So Interestingly enough, I'm going to take a little of my blue and my uh, zinc white. Now, right now, this will seem like a pretty big, pretty big thing, but there is this subtle cast of blue there. And even though we're going to be doing, um, like she's got a pretty deep lid. Got to watch for that. Mm -hmm. We'll just touch along there and make sure we've got that little crease kind of worked out. Let 
maybe a little bit on that inside of the eye. Like that. And then just sort of touch and blend it around. You want to just sort of soften those little edges. I'm going to come back with my dome blender. See how nice and subtle that is? Mm hmm Okay. I think that uh, she is at a good place. Now, next yeah. week. Um, she so looks so different with the different sheens. Mm-hmm. And I noticed that the browns are really hard to adjust for because the, the reflectiveness at one angle makes it turn more red. Yes. And it's just, it's complex coloring. It is. And, you know, when we get back, we're going to soften these out. We're going to refine this and pop some highlights and really pop her eyes and come in and we'll do the necklace and then we'll get the fur done. Um, the thing is, is like, get to here. Right. Because this is almost like your value study of what's, you know, you're going to be doing. Um, you know, try to pay attention to the places. What is that? There's a dark thing that should not be dark. I'm going to just make sure it's not dark and I don't know why. Um, so you just want to make sure that you've got kind of the, the beginnings of what gives her structure, the start of her lips. You know, each of these things has more stuff that can have a little a little more refinement and we're definitely going to come back and like finish out the face and get the eye detail in and the lip detail in. Um, and then we'll get to do a necklace and then fur. Hmm. But next week from the first on Sunday to the seventh on Saturday, every day we are live uh, for paint with me at 1 PM Eastern standard time. Um, and these are going to be autumn paintings that have a fantasy theme. So they're autumn and fantasy. And there are three watercolors and four acrylic lessons. So uh, check out that event. You can see all the materials. They're already scheduled out. So you can go check them out and set a reminder on the ones you know you want to be there for. If you'd like to be part of our text messaging system, I don't know if John has that where he can throw that up, but you can get a text notification from us when we're live as well. Sometimes we do like, just like you guys, the school teacher calls us in or there's a dentist appointment or unexpected things happen. And so we have to make little adjustments. And the nice thing about getting a text from us is you know that we're going live at that moment mm -hmm. <laughs> because we're texting you about it. So sign up for that. That's completely free for you. Um, be good to yourself. Be good to each other. And I want to see you at an easel really soon. <laughs>